Hi there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct a chi-squared goodness of fit test using SPSS. All right. And in this particular example, which is from the Think and Do book number two, it's the Your Turn number two from chapter 11.1, we're testing to see if the distribution fits a predefined um, distribution that is not even. All right. So what that means are the assumed probabilities in the null hypothesis are not all the same, this right-hand column here. Okay, so I'll demonstrate what I mean in the, in the context of this example. All right. So we have 800 um, blood donors at some regional blood bank, and we're going to check the frequency, the distribution of the blood types. And so in that sample of 800, there's eight different blood types, and these are the frequencies with which those different blood types occur, this middle column. Right? And we want to compare that to the national averages that are defined by these probabilities in the far right. So the national average is 38% for O positive. We want to see if 310 matches that 38%. For O negative, we have 71. Does that match the 7% for the national average? So we're looking for a goodness of fit. Does this frequency data, these observe, the frequency of the observed outcomes, fit with the distribution defined by these probabilities? And notice they're not all equal, hence the um, title here, Assuming Unequal Probabilities. Right? And there's also two parts to this particular video. One, where the data is entered in terms of a frequency table, like the first two columns of, of this table here. And then in the other part, where the data is put in in standard uh, format. When I say standard format, I mean each row is a case, and the columns represent the variables. So since there were 800 blood donors, in standard format, that's 800 cases, and you get 800 rows. Right. So let's get started. We'll do it first with the uh, frequency table uh, data format. So when I get my data, I have my blood type and my frequency. So these frequencies, this column comes from this middle column here. Right. And I have two versions of blood type. I have this with the O with the pluses and the minuses. Um, SPSS had problems with that. I think the plus and the minus might have interfered with some operations. Uh, but it, it had trouble with it. So I just changed the blood types to um, underscore. It's fine with underscores. And then spelling out pause for positive, neg for negative. Um, okay, so that's the one we're going to use. And so the problem with this um, frequency table format is that it's not the standard format for the data. So we have to let SPSS know that this is a frequency table. And what that means is we're going to weight these blood types with their frequencies, so that there's actually 310 O positives, right? So to do that, we just go to weight, or not sorry, not weight, we go to data, then weight cases, right? And if you do this for the first time, um, it'll look like this. You'll have the, the weighting options here, and the do not weight cases is um, already um, highlighted. So I'm going to switch to weight cases. Highlight observed frequency. So now my cases are weighted by the frequency with which they occur. All right, now I'm good to go. So up until this point, I have not done a goodness of fit test. I've just sort of got everything all ready. All right, and let's see, while I'm getting things ready, let me just make sure that my variables are uh, appropriate. So my blood type 2, blood type 1, those are strings. Observed frequency, that's numeric, all right? And then I'm not going to use any decimal places because they're just counts. And I'm going to make sure that this is a scale. You can actually use ordinal for my frequencies. And then my other two are nominal, right? Because they're qualitative data. OK, good. So I weighted. So I made sure my data was formatted correctly. I weighted my outcomes according to their frequencies. And now I can actually do the goodness of fit test. So I'm going to go to Analyze down here to non-parametric tests. We're going to go to one sample, but there's something that may attract you away from that, and that is, depending on your version, you might not have a legacy dialog, but if you do or if you don't, you'll see this chi-squared. You're probably tempted to, to, to click on that because this is a chi-squared test. The problem is this one is not as flexible as the one we find right up here under one sample. It is one sample. It's a sample of 800 blood donors. So we're going to click on one sample. We're going to do a customized analysis. 
right? It starts, the default is up here to automatically choose a comparison method. Um, but I'm going to go to Customize in the Fields. Um, and when you start this off, I've done this once already, so it's already re recalled what I, what I had in there. Uh, the test fields can be the, the, um, the, nominal, the nominal data types, right? So I don't want that blood type 1. That's with the pluses and the minus. So i got to get that out of there. So the field I'm testing is blood types, blood type 2 specifically. Um, so that's good. And then I go to settings. I'm going to go to um, compare observed probabilities. When you open this up at first, it's here to automatically choose. And again, SBSS can automatically choose these things. And it usually does a pretty good job, but not always, and that's where the problem occurs. So I like to tell it what to do. It is going to compare observed probabilities to hypothesize. That is a chi-squared test. The options. Now, if we were assuming all of these probabilities were the same or that the distribution was even, I would click on all categories have equal probabilities. But I'm not. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have this expected probabilities that correspond to these from the national averages, the national um, proportions. OK, so I have to do this by hand. I typed in all of these values. You go in here and you type in you know, O underscore positive. And then you hit Enter, you do the next one. You enter all those. And then you go back up here, and you literally have to type in the 0 0.38, these frequencies. right? But once you get them all done, and that takes a little time, I wanted to do this beforehand so you didn't have to watch me type in a bunch of numbers. But all I did was type in these probabilities here. Right? So those are the expected probabilities. I hit OK. Now I can hit Run. And the output is um, pretty minimal. Right? It tells me the null hypothesis is that the um, categories of blood type occurred with um, spe specified probabilities from here, the third column. It is a chi-squared test. The null, the um, significance here, SIG, that's the significance of the test statistic, which is another way of saying the p-value. So the p-value is 0 0.001. When we did this in the book, we also got a p-value of 0 0.001. We threw a couple more decimals in there, but it rounds to 0 0.001. And the nice thing about using this um, one sample as opposed to chi-square, if you use the one sample, you get this result. But if you hover over it, you can see there's a little bubble that opens up. Double click to activate. I'm going to double click it. And I get a little more, which is nice. And so there's the prior over here is what we just were looking at earlier. Um, and in the book, when we did this by hand with the table, we got a chi-square test statistic of 23.724. Notice SPSS got 23.725. We did some rounding. They, we, you would not really expect them to be exactly the same. And it matches, again, our p-value, 0 0.001. But the little bonus that you get here, in addition to the test statistic, is this nice um, frequency bar graph. And what you can see is the blue represents the observed, and the green the hypothesized based on these probabilities in the null hypothesis. And so what you can see is that the differences aren't that great. The blue bars and the green bars don't look that far apart. Uh, but because this is a sample of 800, I get a little bit of extra significance from that. And that is what leads me to a small p-value. right? And so with the small p-value, we actually reject the null hypothesis. And we can conclude that this regional distribution from this middle column does not seem to fit the national distribution determined by these probabilities. All right, All right so I'm going to show you how to do this real quick with um, data in standard format, which is each row is a case. So there's basically 800 rows. And the main variable is just blood type. So there's 800 different blood types. And it's um, pretty easy to do. It's actually easier to do. Let me get rid of this graph. Because I don't have to weight these variables, right? I'm just going to do a um, chi-square test on the blood types. And it's going to do all the counting and um, frequencies for me. So I go straight to analyze. Well, let's take a look at the variable view. 
right? The donor number, that is numeric, right? That's just which donor. And there's 800 of them. We could scroll down and get 800. So that's numeric. Um, so that's a scale measure. And then the blood type is a string. I don't want to keep it as a string because there, you know, it's, it's, it's a text in there. And let's see, it is nominal, which is good. Okay, good. And I don't have to weight them because it's not in the form of a frequency table. I go straight to analyze. One sample under non-parametric tests. Um, and it starts off here, automatically compare observed data and hypothesize. If you're lucky, that works. It doesn't always work. So I customize my analysis in the fields. Um, and when you do it this way, it might even have donor number over here too. Or it might have them both over here. I'm not exactly sure, but the field is going to be your nominal data to this, um, what you're trying to test the distribution of. We're testing the distribution of blood types, so that's going over in the test field. And then settings, we um, again, it starts at automatically choose, but we're going to do a custom test, and it's a chi-squared test to see if some observed probabilities, how well they compare to hypothesized probabilities. So my options, Again, if all the probabilities were the same, I'd click on this button and I could run it. But I have to enter the expected probabilities. And again, this is just done by hand. You have to enter all this text. And you have to make sure, you got to make darn certain when you enter that, that it is the exact same syntax used over in your data table. You know, if there's a misspelling or something, it can really throw off your test. And then you have to enter all of these probabilities, right? And the probabilities come right from um, my right-hand column here. Okay, so, so once I enter all that, and I did it already so you didn't have to watch me enter numbers, uh, just like last time I hit OK, I hit Run, and I get, because these um, frequencies occur at, with the same distribution as the frequency table, I get the exact same p-value. You can click on it again. And I can get that bar graph and my, um, you know, my bar graph of the expected frequencies versus the hypothesized. I get my test statistic, which is again the same, and another, and again the p-value. So when you do the data in the format that SPSS expects it, it's actually easier. And often that's how you'll get your data, but in sort of an introductory stats course, you'll generally have the data in terms of a frequency table. And you can do that in SPSS so long as you remember to go to data and weight the cases. When you weight the cases, it, um, it allows you to use this um, frequency table data format. Uh, either way, provided the data is the same, um, you'll get the same output as far as the test results are concerned. And I believe that is everything. Um, goodness of fit test with SPSS. Not bad. Bye.